Egyptian mythology is full of exotic deities that have an appearance that mixes human features with animals. Besides these anthropomorphic divine figures, this mythology is also full of incredible creatures that further enrich the mythological universe created by this ancient culture. Today, we will meet some of the most impressive creatures in Egyptian mythology. This video is brought to you by NordVPN. As we spend more and more of our time online, concerns about privacy and security becomes vital. NordVPN uses more than 5,000 world-class next-gen server infrastructure in over 60 countries, meaning you get a secure, reliable VPN connection anytime, anywhere. It just takes a click. Open the map, click on a location, and you'll be connected in seconds. It's that easy. Access from anywhere. Don't miss your favorite content. Even when traveling abroad, stay at home virtually. Unblock your favorite games and geo-restricted servers. Don't let your location limit where you can play. Also, Nord offers you more than VPN service. You can also have security with NordPass Password Manager that safely secures your password so you never forget them. And NordLocker, a virtual cloud service that you can use to store and access your files safely anywhere you are. You can use NordVPN on up to six devices at main platforms. Windows, Android, iOS, macOS, and Linux, even on your Android TV. Go to nordvpn.com slash history to get a two-year plan plus one additional month with a huge discount. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Make your connection to the world safer and more discreet with NordVPN. In ancient Egypt, the sun was considered the supreme deity. It was represented by Ra, a god with the body of a man and the head of a falcon. But deep in the underworld, there was a gigantic serpent named Apophis, which was looking for an opportunity to attack the solar bark of the god Ra. In doing so, it could destroy the rising of a new day in the world of the mortals. The ancient Egyptian myths say that Apophis sprang for the umbilical cord of Ra when he gave life to himself in the universe's vastness. It was the main adversary of Ra, the god of sun and light. Sometimes Apophis is described as a giant serpent, the top of whose head is covered with a hard, smooth stone called silicate. Every single day, Ra traveled through the heavens in his solar bark, illuminating the world. But, at the end of the day, the falcon god sailed towards the Egyptian underworld, Duat. Apophis, trapped in Duat since the beginning of time, was already looking for a way to attack Ra's bark. Both deities engaged in epic combat that caused storms and earthquakes in the world of humans. Apophis faced other gods that accompanied Ra in his solar bark. The main opponent was the god Seth, who, at the bow of the bark, was always ready to strike Apophis with a spear. The giant serpent managed to swallow Ra's bark a few times, but was unable to keep it in his stomach for long, which gave rise to solar eclipses. Apophis lived in the underworld and was therefore sometimes considered a devourer of souls. Thus, the dead also needed protection from it. Sometimes funerals included spells to ward off the serpents. Egyptian priests organized rituals to curse Apophis and banish its evil presence from the world. They believed that this helped the god Ra to complete his sky voyage. The demonic monster, Amit, was also a deeply feared creature by the ancient Egyptians, being known as the Devourer of the Dead. His body combined different animals, lion's front paws, hippopotamus's hind paws, and a crocodile's head topped with a lion's mane. Amit was a funerary deity that lived near the Scales of Justice in the Hall of Two Truths in Duat, the Egyptian underworld. The god Anubis weighed the hearts of all deceased people to decide who deserved to go on to paradise or to be punished. The heart was placed on one side of the scale. On the other side was the feather of Mat, the goddess of truth, to counterbalance the organ's weight. If the heart was lighter than the feather, the soul of the deceased could head for Osiris and enter Aru, the Egyptian's paradise. But if the heart was heavy due to sins, it was considered impure. Emmet would devour the organ, and the judge person would not be allowed to continue their existence. 
After Emmett swallowed the heart, the deceased soul would be restless forever. This was considered dying a second time. Due to its cruel and animalistic character, Emmett was not entitled to temples or worship services, as it symbolized everything that the Egyptians feared. It threatened to imprison them in eternal suffering, if they did not live an honest and kind life. Emmett represented the fairness of the afterlife. Everyone, rich or poor, good or bad, would be judged equally at the end of their lives. Not all mythological creatures had a grotesque or supernatural appearance. Some took on simple forms, but also limiting their powers. Bennu is one of the oldest deities in Egypt, being related to creation and rebirth. It is the original inspiration for the phoenix legends that have developed in various cultures. Usually depicted as a huge grey heron wearing a pharaoh's crown, Bennu, like the god of Ra, was a self-created being with an important role in the world's establishment. An ancient myth says that Bennu flew over the waters of Nun, the primordial ocean that existed before creation, landing on a rock and uttering a call that determined the nature of creation. Bennu was considered immortal, able to renew itself periodically. The same reasoning was applied to the sun that rose every day in the sky. It was also a symbol of rebirth associated with Osiris. It was often one of the forms taken by the god of the underworld to visit the mortal realm. Part of the first creatures to appear in the world, along with Atum and Ra, Bennu was worshipped as its cult center in Heliopolis. It was depicted in ancient paintings and funerary amulets as a symbol of rebirth. Beyond the Egyptian borders lived a wild and frightening creature, Serpopard. It was a monster with the body and head of a lion or leopard, and a long neck resembling the body of a serpent. Serpopard is also in Mesopotamia myths, where it is represented as a lioness with an exceptionally long neck. In ancient Egypt, serpopards symbolized agents of chaos. They were often depicted in pairs in paintings, in high reliefs, hunting other animals, or with their necks entwined. Serpopards played an important role in the religious concepts of Upper and Lower Egypt. They were probably animals associated with protection and royalty. The image of this bizarre creature was used on household utensils of the Egyptian nobility and pharaohs. Another hybrid creature from Egyptian mythology is the griffin. Although it is also part of the myths of other peoples of Greece and Mesopotamia, it has unique traits in Egyptian traditions, with a dog-like body and a falcon's head. The Egyptian griffin assumed various shapes and sizes. Some depictions had wings, a leopard-like body, and a human head emerging on its back. In other myths, griffin represented a servant of Horus, being the embodiment of the god's power on earth, responsible for carrying out divine justice. Like Serpopard, the griffin also had protective functions and could ward off the action of demons and other evil creatures. The griffin seems to have been elevated to the status of heraldic animal of the pharaoh and appeared regularly in official documents. The statues of the sphinxes are iconic symbols of Egyptian architecture. The most famous is the Great Sphinx of Giza. It was once believed that these mystical creatures were real, with a lion's body, a human head, and sometimes hawk's wings. The myth of the sphinxes reached ancient Egypt, where the creatures were depicted with a woman's head, a lion's hips, and bird's wings. They were considered treacherous and merciless, killing those who could not answer their riddle. The deadly version of a sphinx appears in the myth and drama of Oedipus in Greek mythology. To the Egyptians, the sphinx was benevolent, but had a fierce strength and personality, like the malevolent Greek version. Both were considered guardians of temple entrances. In the most famous myth of the sphinxes, the goddess Hera summoned the sphinx that lived near the Nile River in Upper Egypt. The monster headed for Thebes, Greece, where it asked everyone who crossed its path the most famous riddle in history. What animal walks in the morning on four legs, in the afternoon on two, and at night on three? It strangled and devoured anyone who couldn't answer. Until a legendary king named Oedipus solved the riddle, it is man, for he crawls on all fours when he is a baby, then walks on two feet when he is grown up, 
and in the end, uses a cane in old age. The second riddle was made. There are two sisters, one gives birth to another, and the latter gives birth to the former. Who are the two sisters? Oedipus answered, day and night. Defeated, the Sphinx threw itself off the high rock and died into the abyss. We don't know for sure how many monsters and fantastic creatures were part of religious beliefs in ancient Egypt. Many stories have been lost in the sands of time or have not been fully deciphered, but the legacy of Egyptian culture and mythology still fascinates people all over the world.